this is an example of unbalanced chemical equation so here you can see fp plus h2o is given and uh, the in the these are in the reactant sides in the product side iron oxide that is fe3o4 plus h2 is given step 1 you can just box each of the elements here as shown yes and next step you can count the number of atoms of reactant and product so fe in the left hand side that is in the reactant side it is only one so write down one here and in the right hand side there are three fe and hydrogen is two here two again so oxygen molecules is only one here and uh, there are four number of oxygen atoms here okay so let's see how do you balance such an equation in uh, the first step you can uh, first thing you can do is you can uh, see which has the highest number of unbalanced atoms that is uh, the you can see here there are four oxygen atoms here and there is only one oxygen atoms to make it easy for you guys i have put a table for reference there is one uh, on the le left hand side and there are four on the right hand side so you can uh, put down a similar table here and you in the reactant side there is one and in the product side there are four so what you have to do now you have to bring four in the reactant side you have to bring four oxygen in the reactant side where is oxygen in the reactant side it is in the water molecule so water molecules you can multiply by four now you can get a perfectly balanced oxygen molecules so there are four oxygen molecules on the left hand side and four oxygen molecules on the right hand side so now that oxygen is uh, balanced we'll move on to the next step you can see here when you multiplied a uh, water molecule by 4 you also increased the number of hydrogen molecules here it was 2 before now it has become 8 but in the right hand side it is still 2 because we haven't made any changes in the right hand side so let's try to correct that so initially now we have 8 hydrogens here we have 2 hydrogens so to make an 8 how much do you need to multiply by 2 you can just divide 8 by 2 that is 4 you should add 4 in the right hand side that is in the hydrogen part of the equation so now both have here you can see both have equal amount of hydrogen and oxygen both the sides we are left with Fe. Fe is iron. So, iron in the left hand side is 1. In the right hand side, in the product side, there is there are 3 iron. So, you, you need to just multiply uh, the reactant side by 3. So, you can add 3 here. That is multiplication. You can write it neatly like this. This is a perfectly balanced equation. In the next step, you can just uh, check the number of atoms in the reactants and in the products. Here, Fe is uh, balanced, hydrogen is balanced, and oxygen is balanced. Now you know how many atoms or how many molecules of each atom is uh, taking place in a reaction. But what about their physical state? In what form are they in? You do not know about that. So, we need to represent that also. Like, uh, you can write the symbols for that. You can see here, I have mentioned a pretty small table. S for solid, L for liquid, G for gaseous, and AQ for aqueous. And here, in the previous reaction which we balanced, here, Fe is in solid state. Water is in gaseous state. Fe3O4 is in solid state and H2 is in gaseous state. Here you can see here 
H2O is considered as liquid most of the times. That is why we don't want to get into a confusion. We write gaseous G for the symbol. And for some reactions, we also need to mention the conditions. That is, here 3, 340 atm is written. That is, 340 atmospheric pressure is required to um, convert these reactants into products. Let's see another uh, way of writing. This is catalyst, you guys. Above the arrow, if you write anything that is the conditions, this, this is an example for condition and this is example for catalyst. If these catalysts are not present, the reactants won't form into a product. So here is all you need to know about a chemical equation. This chemical equation can tell you more about the chemical reaction that is happening more than a simple word equation. That is why we mention all these things in the equation.